Welcome to Kaladio. It is such an honor to have you here today. Thank you for clicking on this video. I believe God has an appointment with you today. He has a specific message for you today. And I believe through this online platform, we as a loving community can flow out to you wherever you are watching from, wherever you are listening from. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being part of this community. If you've been here for a while, if you've been sowing into the kingdom, I want to thank you so much. Because of you, we reach thousands of people each week. And I want to encourage you to keep on giving, keep on building, keep on dreaming with me into this community, into this ministry. If you want to get into contact with me, our details are in the description below. And you can join our WhatsApp group as well so I can share the dream and the vision that God has um, for this community and this ministry. Um, and I believe with you, we can make all of these dreams that God has possible. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope you enjoy the service. I hope that you get something from this service, that something that spiritually will help you grow and that you, wherever you're watching from, even if it's in your pajamas or your slippers, with a cup of coffee, enjoy the service with us. We love you. I love you, Lord. Oh, you mercy never fails me. And all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness.
Hey, Caladia, it's great being with you once again. And I trust from wherever you're watching that you are comfortable, that you have maybe a cup of coffee in your hand or whatever you're doing. But more importantly, I want to talk to specific people today. And I'm sure if you're listening to me, you might fall in this category. Um, and maybe this, if this resonates with you, uh, you can just think about this for a moment. But I want to talk to people who have the sense that there must be something more to their lives. They, they, they sense that they were created to do something bigger. They were created and meant to do something significant. That you have this sense that, that maybe God has a plan for your life and, and there's a purpose and you, you maybe haven't discovered it yet and you are not really clear about what it is, but you sense something of God working in you and you, you just know that there has to be more. You want to do something important. You want to do something that matters. You want to be someone that is used by God in powerful and miraculous ways. You are someone that you feel that maybe God has a calling on your life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. If you resonate with something like that and you, you feel that you were created for a purpose, that you aren't here by accident and you, you want to do something with an eternal purpose, an eternal kingdom value, that you have a divine destiny and you might not be sure what it is or know what you are about, but you, that it resonates with something inside of you. I know that when, when people say this, it resonates with something inside of me. Even though, much like you, sometimes I'm, I'm unsure of exactly what it is that God wants me to do, but I just sense that God has something for me. And so today we're, we're talking about this question, is God calling me? Is God calling me? Does He have a call for my life? And this is a profound, serious and life-changing question, one that we need to answer, one that we need to pay attention to in our lives. And very often, the idea of calling can be quite confusing because sometimes we think it's this way or it's that way or whatever is happening and you try to figure out, you know, what this calling is. But if you don't discover the call of God on your life, it doesn't matter how much you earn, what brand you wear, what size house you have, what car you drive, how successful you are in business. There will always be a longing for significance in your life. Usually, that is the main question when people go through a phase that psychologists and pop culture and everybody have, have coined and called it a, a midlife crisis. It's not a crisis. It's a question of significance of, is this what I am meant to do? And if this is not what I'm meant to do, what should I be doing? And I want to tell you today, if you're asking the question, is God calling me? The answer is absolutely yes. God is calling you. God has a plan and a destiny and a purpose for your life. And I want to read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 to you. You can follow along on the screen. Maybe you've got your Bible out and maybe you need to highlight this and uh, circle this and underline this and put it on your fridge or do something with it. But Paul Around 61 years after Christ, he's imprisoned wrongfully. And from prison, he writes the following words. And I want you to hear this. I want you to maybe sit with this for a moment and apply it to your own life. Ephesians 4 verse 1 says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you, listen to the emotion here, I beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Paul is saying, I beg you 
to live a life worthy of your calling. And today we want to reclaim the biblical language of calling. Since we live in a society where everyone can become insta-famous, where this whole life is sort of uh, built around building your own brand and building your personality and becoming important and getting likes and follows. And, uh, and maybe you're not into the social media thing and you think, yeah, well, that's not my scene. But I can promise you in today's culture, somewhere you are driven to become important in what you think your area of expertise is. But that differs quite significantly from the idea of calling in the Bible. The word calling comes from a Greek word, um, and it sounds a lot like our church name. The Greek word is kaleo, K-A-L-E-O. And that is the root word for many New Testament words, many really important New Testament words. And I'm just going to mention a few to you. It's the root word uh, for klesis, which means calling. So kaleo means to call, and it's the root word of klesis, means calling. It is the root word for kletos, which means called, you have been called. It is uh, a root word for the word paraclete, which it references to the Holy Spirit. Um, para meaning coming next to, and klet is called, he's called next to you. It refers to the comforter, the Holy Spirit. And then another reference to the Holy Spirit, the parakletos, which means the one who's called alongside you. It calls the advocate, the intercessor, the one who's next to you. And then the word ecclesia, which we have translated church. Ecclesia simply means the ones who have been called out. We've been called out, not into the church, but out of the church. We've been called out. We are a holy people. We're set apart by God. God has called us. And this word calling is a biblical word that we need to pay attention to. And very often, the idea of calling gets confused. And it becomes confusing. Because usually when we ask people, what are you called for? Sometimes we say it in this way, what are you called to do? And usually when we talk about calling, we connect it with something we do. So maybe you can say, you know, I want to do something and, and it should be big and it should be important. And God has called me to be a preacher or God has called me to be a nurse or a doctor or a lawyer and God has called me and usually we connect the the call of God to something we do but it's interesting that the Bible never ever speaks about calling in terms of what you do it doesn't and I think that's where we sometimes miss the idea of calling and what it means to be called by God the Bible doesn't connect calling to what we do. Calling is primarily about who you are before what you do. Oh, you need to write this down. Maybe comment it in the comment section or something. Calling is about who you are before what you do. It's about who before the do. And Paul writes to a young man named Timothy, and he says the following, 2 Timothy 1 verse 9, For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. Hey, God saved us. He gave His Son so that we can be saved, so that we can be free from sin, that we can experience this life in abundance that He speaks about in John chapter 10. And He says this is why He saved us, so that we could live a holy life. And then He says this, He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was His plan from before the beginning of time, to show us His grace through Christ Jesus. Calling is as much who you are becoming as it is what you're doing. That's the main 
question that you need to answer when we talk about calling. Who are you becoming? Because God has called us to become like Christ. That's our primary calling, is that we will be transformed in our lives, not through our careers, not through what we do, not through what we think we're talented for and that we should be able to do as a career or as a calling. The primary calling that we see in Scripture is that we are to become like Jesus. It's the who before the do. See, you are called to become like someone because if calling is only about what you're doing, it becomes confusing. Because in, in, my, in my life, and maybe you can apply this to yourself wherever you are, I am called to be a preacher. I'm called to do this. And so I can do this every week and preach on Sundays and during the week and teach groups of people. But then when I go home, I am also called to be a husband to my wife which is a completely different skill set. I'm still the same person, but I can't apply the same things that I do in my job to the calling of being a husband. I can't speak to Beninka in the same way that I preach. That would just create havoc. Can you imagine me preaching to my wife every single day? You know, and at the end of a discussion, maybe I would just say, listen, all of you who are seated here, if you feel Jesus speaking to you, just raise your hand. Can you imagine what would happen in that conversation? It's a different skill set, but it's the same person. So I've been called to preach, but I've also been called to be a husband to my wife. And on top of that, I've also been called to be a father to Ethan, a neighbor which is something completely different from being a husband or being a pastor. See, that's where it gets confusing. If we only connect calling to what we do, we're going to ask questions like, well, what if I miss the call? You know, maybe, maybe I should have gone and, and studied in that direction, but now we didn't have money as a family. I couldn't go to varsity and I had to take a job. Now I missed the call of God on my life. Or maybe you were thinking, and I should have asked that girl on a date and I should have married her and now she married someone else and now I've missed that call and now I'm stuck and I'm miserable. Or I should have done this and now I've missed the call of God in my life. I believe that's where a lot of people get stuck in their walk with Jesus. Because we've connected the call only to what we do. The call is about who you are becoming more than what you do. And listen... Calling isn't about something important you do in the future. It's about your faithfulness to Jesus today. Man, this is profound. It's not something that you're going to do in the future. A lot of us wait for the call of God. So we wait and we wait and we wait and we say no. But when it comes around, we'll know what it is. And then we'll start doing something for God. No, it's not about doing something important in the future. It's about being faithful to Jesus right now. Paul writes this to the Colossians in chapter 3, verse 17. It says, and whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through Him to God the Father. Paul says, whatever you do, whether you feel like you're in the wrong job, whether you're in a marriage that's struggling at the moment, whether you are working with kids that keep on running away from God and you're praying for them, whether you're struggling financially, whether things are going really well in your business, it doesn't really matter. Paul is saying, whatever you do, we have been called to become like Christ and remain faithful to him. 
And maybe just as an illustration, let's, let's use a story from the book of Mark. In chapter 10 and chapter 11. We're not going to read all of that. We're just going to read three verses together. But in chapter 10, you see two of his disciples, James and John. They come to Jesus and they say, Hey, Jesus, we, we want to ask you a favor. Would you, would you be so kind that one day when you're seated on your throne in heaven, may one of us sit on your right hand and the other one on your left? Do you see what they're doing? They have connected their call to something that they deem important. They say, Lord, we just want to be important. We want to share. You know, we want to have, to have two seats on your right and on your left so that when people think of you, that maybe they'll think of us too. You know, we want to be important. We want to build our brand. We want, to, we want to be the guys that are next to Jesus. We want to do something big and something important. That's what they ask. That's what they're asking. And then Jesus answers them by telling them a story. And he says the following, if you want to lead in the kingdom of God, you start by serving. If you want to be first, you have to be last. And what Jesus is saying here, saying if you want to lead, you have to become someone. You have to develop the heart of a servant. It's not about doing service. It's about becoming it's who you are more than what you do. It's an attitude. It's a, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of life. And then in the very next chapter, chapter 11, we get Jesus entering Jerusalem. Now, this was the big moment. This was, I mean, the disciples had followed him around. They had endured ridicule from other people, but they saw the miracles and they were known as the men that traveled with Jesus. And so Jesus is entering Jerusalem. It's called the triumphal entry. You know, it's where the palm leaves were thrown on the ground and clothes were thrown on the ground. And Jesus entered Jerusalem in this big moment. And I could just imagine the disciples walking around and thinking, well, this this is our moment. You know, we are gonna, we are gonna rule. Jesus is gonna rule things, and we're gonna be with him. And the Bible doesn't say especially who Jesus chose, but in Mark chapter eleven, verse one, the Bible says this: As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, and Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Now the Bible doesn't say who he sent, but I could just imagine if I were Jesus, then I would use what I just taught them about being lost, if you want to be first, I would probably select James and John. I'm sure he selected James and John. It's just my opinion. And then he sends them to go do something. And I could imagine just what they thought. You know, okay, here's the moment. We are going to enter Jerusalem. We are with Jesus. We're going to cast out demons. We're going to call down fire from heaven and destroy the whole Roman Empire. I mean, this is, this is going to be huge. But verse 2 and 3 says this. Jesus speaking to them, Go into that village over there, he told them. As soon as you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, what are you doing? Just say, the Lord needs it and we'll return it soon. Wait a minute, Jesus. We thought we we're going to rule with you. That's what we asked you. I mean, do, do you know how much we gave up to follow you? Do, we, do you know the ridicule we endured? We expected at least some important job and now we are on donkey duty. Just go fetch the donkey. I think this is an object lesson that Jesus used. He just taught them and said, hey, if you want to be a leader, you need to serve. You need to be last if you want to be first. And he said, oh, go fetch me the donkey. And they had to go fetch the donkey. And very often, we don't see what God is doing 
in our lives. And that's why it requires faithfulness. Because the size of your assignment never determines the significance of your impact. They had to fetch a donkey which carried Jesus to His calling. The size of your assignment never determines the significance of your impact. Just think about a young shepherd boy called David who discovered that a small stone can kill a really big giant. Or the young boy who brought five loaves and two fish, his little lunchbox, to Jesus. And Jesus used that small little thing and multiplied it so that 5,000 men and a bunch of women and children could eat. Jesus requires faithfulness. He requires faithfulness. Because God is more interested in who you are becoming than what you do. He expects you to become like Jesus and carry the heart of Jesus in your life so that everything you do, it doesn't matter what you do, will glorify Him because He gave His life so that you can be free from sin, so that you could experience grace, that you could experience forgiveness, that your life can turn around and experience an overflow of God's mercy and grace. And, and when we start living our lives to glorify Him, it no longer becomes about us discovering the big, massive thing that we should be doing. It becomes about us discovering that as we remain faithful to Jesus, we are growing in our call and our lives start glorifying Him. That's the first thing we need to understand about calling. Because I want to tell you this, and I promise you this. If you become like Christ, if you're becoming like Him and you're growing in your life and in your heart and your mind to become more like Him, and your whole life is directed toward glorifying Him, even if you feel like you're on donkey duty, even if you feel like you have, to, you have to fight for your marriage, even when your partner doesn't seem to have any fight left, even when you feel like you're in the wrong job, even when you feel like you have missed your call somewhere along the line and you're a bit miserable and you feel like you're on donkey duty, when you reorient your heart to become more like Christ and glorify Him by remaining faithful, you won't have to look for your calling. Your calling will find you. Faithfulness is rewarded. Jesus never said that at the end of time we will stand before Him. And because we've built our own image and we've built our own brand and we've built things and we've done a lot of stuff. And let me just say this, please, if, if you're in business, build that business. Jesus found great joy in telling this story where he gave five talents to the one. The guy multiplied it to ten. If that's, if that's what God has placed you in, you grow that and you multiply that and you glorify him in your business. And you do business with integrity and with strength of character. And you do it as a child and a follower of Jesus. If you're married, if you're raising kids, maybe you're calling Right now, even though you've got the education and you have the skill set, you know, to be professionally really successful, but maybe your calling right now is to take care of those babies. Maybe that's where Jesus requires faithfulness from you. As you remain faithful, your calling will find you. Because God isn't interested in our importance. He doesn't say at the end of time, well done, good and important servant. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. And if there's one prayer that I have for my own life, 
through all my mistakes, with all my sin, with all my humanness, I pray that one day I might stand before God and He might look at my life and He might say, you were faithful. Even when you doubted. Even when things didn't go well. Even when things didn't work out the way you planned. Even if the big important things that you thought were going to promote you didn't work out and, and you were on donkey duty, you were faithful. And I pray that for my life and I pray that for your life. We have been called to become like Jesus. I just want to remind you of what we said today. God is more concerned about who you are becoming than what you are doing. And even if it's donkey duty, do it all to the glory of God. Because we've not been called to be important. We've been called to be faithful. Maybe just want to read Ephesians 4 to you once again. And I, and I pray that the Spirit of God will stir something inside of you as you hear these words or read these words with me once again. Paul says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. You have been called by God to bring glory to Jesus Christ, to remain faithful to Jesus. That is your first and foremost service to Him. That is your primary call, is that you will be like Jesus, that you will be transformed into His image in every area of your life, as a husband, as a wife, as a son, as a daughter, as a, a worker, as a business owner, as, as someone that maybe just, uh, you know, you feel like you're just driving the kids around. Do that to the glory of God and remain faithful to Jesus and pay attention to who you are becoming. Live a life that is worthy of that call. That's my prayer for you. Even though you might feel like you're on donkey duty right now and something in your heart resonates and says, I, but there's something more. There's something that I feel God is calling me toward. Remember, God is firstly concerned about who you are becoming. God transforms us from who we are becoming, from our lives outward to the world. And allow Him to speak to you. Maybe you're called right now to go love your wife a little bit better. Maybe you feel convicted by God's Spirit to do your company's books with a little bit more integrity right now. Maybe you're convicted by God's Spirit right now and feel called to pay a little bit more attention to when your son or your daughter is speaking to you. Maybe you feel called to repent of some sin in your life. Because God is interested in who you are becoming. It's the who before the do. Because when we do before we become, we are underqualified and overexposed. And we do things that we shouldn't be doing. And my prayer is that you will develop faithfulness in your walk with Jesus. That you will discover that you've been called to become like Him, firstly. And when you do that in faithfulness, when you honor Him with your life, when you bring glory to Him, the do part of your call, that will find you. You won't have to go looking for it. God will bring that to you. May you rediscover what God has for your life in the next couple of weeks as you pay attention to what He's saying and what He's calling you to be faithful to. So Lord Jesus, we thank you that our lives can be directed toward worshiping and glorifying you. Today we thank you for this great sacrifice that you paid. You gave your life so that we could have freedom, freedom from sin freedom from sickness. We could have a life and have it in abundance. We could be co-heirs 
with you. Thank you for that. We, we want to glorify you and we pray that as a church, as a body, as disciples, as people who follow Jesus, we pray that our lives will glorify you as we recognize that this is our primary call. That we will become who you've called us to be. So Father, I pray right now that through your Spirit you will set people free from this idea that I have to do so much. You are calling us firstly to become like Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for, Lord, maybe removing a bit of weight from people's shoulders who have been feeling that they've missed their calling because they've connected it to something they had to do. Maybe today it just encourages them to know that they haven't missed their calling. The calling has always been from the start to become like your son. And so we thank you for that. We worship you. We glorify you. May our lives glorify you and reflect who you are. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It was great being with you today. And I pray that God will speak to you, that you will discover who you need to become. God bless you. If today's message blessed you, can I encourage you to send this to somebody? Like our page, um, click the notification bell, um, send this to somebody that maybe this could change their lives as well. And walk with this message through the week and encourage somebody with this. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a blessed week.